everyone, my fellow Americans, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about consciousness. Apparently Kitty's joining me. So this mathematician was talking to Joe Rogan about how he is trying to figure out consciousness. A consciousness is like, uh, could also be called the soul or the spirit, things of that nature. And um, for the longest time, science tried to say that, no, there is no soul, there is no spirit, there's nothing more than your brain. Even today, even they try to say, no, it's just anything that you're doing is your brain. But this guy said, no, there's got to be a little, a little something more. So let's listen to what he has to say. Let me press play. It's pretty convincing to me that this shows that we don't think when we understand something that what's going on in our heads is not an algorithm it's not okay. following rules it's something else it's something that requires our conscious appreciation of what we're thinking about and thinking is a conscious thing and understanding is a conscious activity so i formed the view that conscious activities, whatever they are, not just that kind of thing, but, you know, um, playing music or, or falling in love or whatever these things might be, are not computations. There's something else going on. And then I thought, because I, you know, I'm not like just computational brain stuff. And I think that what's going in on our heads is according to the laws of physics. And these laws of physics are um, pretty good. They seem to work well in the outside worlds and so I believe that the laws that work in our heads are the same as those laws. So I began to think about it, well what about Newton's mechanics, but well, you could put that on a computer, what about Einstein's special relativity, you could do that, what about Maxwell's wonderful equations which tell you how le electricity and magnetism operate and light and radio waves and all these things, that's all follows this beautiful set of equations that Maxwell produced. You can put that on a computer. Okay, you may have to worry about approximations and you know, these depend on continuous numbers rather than discrete things, but I didn't think that's the answer. Then I thought, what about general relativity, Einstein's theory of gravity, of curved space and all that? Well, you, we're familiar now with LIGO, this detector which has detected black holes spiraling into each other from distant galaxy. And how do we know that those signals are black holes? Well, because of calculations, people have put this thing on an algorithm, and you know <laughs> what those uh, signals look like. It out. So Einstein's general relativity, sure, you can put that on a computer. What about quantum mechanics? Well, there's the famous equation of Schrodinger, which tells you how a quantum state evolves. You can put that on a computer too. It's difficult in many ways. There's many more parameters you've got to worry about. But it's just as computable as these other things. Well, you see, I then remember Dirac's lecture, you see, and how it is that these things that work in the quantum world don't seem to work at the level of classical big things. And it all depends on this process of what's called measurement in quantum mechanics. And the measurement process is something you learn how to do but it's not the Schrodinger equation, it's something else. And Schrodinger himself was very intrigued by this fact that his own equation gives you nonsense. And he, 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 the famous Schrodinger's cat, where he produces a situation in which the cat would be dead and alive at the same time, he produced that in example simply to demonstrate that, roughly speaking, his equation gives you nonsense under these circumstances. So there's something else. And the something else goes beyond our current quantum mechanics and it tells you what happens when the quantum state makes a decision between when well, it doesn't follow the Schrodinger equation does one thing or the other. No. So, like he's saying, there's something else. There's something else happening when we figure something out, when we are when we go beyond the technology we have already. All this technology we have is pretty cool, right? It's pretty awesome. How did we figure that out? 
what is, you know, how did we as human beings decide, okay, we're just going to sit here and think about this and it's just going to come to us. It's not, it's something beyond us. Okay. And that is what he's trying to say, but in sort of a scientific math, mathematical way. And, ooh, it's coming down out there. It's a dark and stormy night here today. So when you look into spiritual things, the Bible, things like that, they all talk about the soul or that there are, that there's a spirit involved with things, right? And when you look at what the Bible says about this, um, the Bible talks about this like this breath or every breathing thing or spirit, right? It's called, but one of its definitions is inspiration. And I have it over here, right? Part of our consciousness, part of our soul is the inspiration that we're given by God to do good things and by the devil to do bad things, right? The devil doesn't make us do it. God doesn't make us do it. But we are given inspiration to do them. We're given the ideas. We, we sit around and things percolate in our brain and things happen. And then spirits also help us get there. You see this in a lot of older texts where uh, the people who come up with all sorts of different things say that the sky gods or the spirits taught them how to do things. What does that mean? Obviously, you know, as a, from a Christian perspective, you know, it's either, it's either God or it's demons. So I believe that those are demons talking to them, giving them inspiration to do things, right? So in this definition, oh, let me get back over there. So wind, angry or vital breath, divine inspiration, intellect. Okay. It's our intellect, our ability. That is what spirit consciousness and all this is. There's a lot more going on in our brains than just computing. Okay. There is this spirit and in Proverbs 20, 27, it talks about the human spirit is a lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's most inmost being. We talk about being introspective all the time, or I do. I talk about being introspective. I've talked about it on this channel before. The ability to be introspective and change the direction you're going and get inspiration from God or negative inspiration, etc., is all because of the consciousness or the soul that we have. It's animals. You don't see animals being able to do this. You don't see plants and things like that. So I thought that was really cool for me. This is Bible in action. So that's where I'm going to put this. And that's all I wanted to talk about today. You tell me, what do you think? Um, I think that this is just more, like I've always said, science is very young compared to religion or spirituality and definitely compared to Christianity being the first religion or spirituality that existed. So <clears throat> I am glad that they're catching up is all I can say. <laughs> all right, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Remember to pray and read your Bible every day. All right. Bye.